All right, guys, so welcome in on another episode of the podcast. Right now, I'm very excited to have George Bloom, successful real estate, um, successful real estate entrepreneur here with us. Um, welcome. How you doing, Bobby? Good to Absolutely. see you, man. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on. Very good to see you. Very good to have you on. Um, you know, jo- George, I know you're 30 years old. You've been in real estate three years, closed in on roughly 80 to 100 deals in your young real estate career. Um, The reason I'm excited to have you on is I always try to have on inspiring people that have interesting careers or interesting life stories. Recently had a professional boxer on, um, then went down to Miami, had somebody that's earned $3 million in the last three years in network marketing, had an internet entrepreneur on, um, have had some other successful business people. So have not had somebody that's in real estate on the podcast yet. So I think it's very good to bring you on because I think real estate's an important aspect of people's lives. Everybody dreams of getting that first condo, getting that first house, or eventually when they're sick of working their nine to five job, people always say, hey, hey, I'm gonna go flip houses or I'm gonna go get into real estate. So I feel like what you're doing can really touch people's lives and really impact people's lives, especially being that you've been doing it for multiple years, you've closed in on so many deals, you've really seen the industry inside and out, and you've seen a lot of success in that. So again, welcome on. It's Thanks. very good to have you here. Appreciate it. Glad I'm here. One of the best things that I like about it, and you know, just that entrepreneur feel, as you were saying, you, yeah. you, you get into it and there's just so many different aspects of the real estate market. Yeah. You know, you can work with buyers, sellers, you can focus on listings, and the great thing about it is that you're really helping people. Right. You've got to feel good about that. Yeah, of course. Right? Like, course. it's got to be an enjoyable feeling. And I know that it's an enjoyable thing for you because I've, I've run into you a few, a few occasions. We met up at the Jaguars game, I think, right. two times, and each time I saw you there, you were having a really good time. Oh, yeah. You were feeling very good. I've spoken to you on the phone for a few times, and you've always been very positive and energetic now were you always like an energetic happy person or does real estate kind of bring that out of you like how does that work i think the real estate definitely brings it out i'm pretty enthusiastic about that and i would say ever since growing up i've always had that you know go getter attitude let's go get it let's do something how can i do this to make it work where can i do this and just kind of went with that and real estate is it how much of it is an enjoyable career? How much of it is a stressful career? I would say about 80 to 85% enjoyable. Right. The rest is a little, uh, it's, right. a, it's a little tense. Right. And I say like, I, I try to compare people's jobs towards a nine to five job. I like to ask people, you know, what does your average day look like? When I recently, I had, um, one of my friends, Julian Kushner on, and he was talking about how he's earned so much money in network marketing, uh, $3 million over the last couple of years, and he talked about how he wakes up, he gets right down to his phone calls. He goes and practices some meditation. He sets up some appointments, and then he goes out into the day, and he goes and he has those appointments. Then he specifically sets time aside to get on social media, record videos, record photos, post, follow up with all of those leads, close some of those sales deals, and he really walked us through the structure of his day. As somebody that's seeing success in real estate, what does your average day look like? So one of the great things about what I do is, for the average day, it's consistently different, if that makes any sense. Right. So I can have three months where it's jam-packed, you know, 10 to 15 hours a day, you're waking up 545, you're answering calls at six, and the last call that you might get at nighttime is 1.30 at night from your guy in Japan or your Hawaii, right. or your Hawaii guy. Uh-huh. Um, and I do a lot of military relocation. Right. So I'm getting, I have people in Italy, Japan, Hawaii, California, all over the place. So all the different time zones, you know, they might be calling me at, you know, noon their time, it's 1.30 in the morning. <laughs> In Jacksonville, Florida. Right. Yeah. So I got to make myself available for that. So waking up in the morning, taking those calls, make sure I'm following up with all those clients on a timely basis. It's like no matter what, you're on the phone. You're I'm, constantly having your phone ready so that when that client A calls in, he knows that he's his attention. He's attuned to him. 
And you know what? I noticed that about uh, your uncle Jeff as well, too. Mm-hmm. Yo, he helped me close out one of my deals down here. And whenever I called him, he picked up or he got right back to me right away. He made me feel like I was his most important client. Now, I'm sure my deal wasn't his biggest deal. It probably wasn't in his top 10 biggest deals whatsoever. But, but it was important. <laughs> yeah, he made me feel I was important because to me, that was an important deal. And I'm sure that has a lot to do with what what it is that you're doing. And I think look, when you look at what skills are most important, I like to say, what what are applicable business skills? When people listen in to somebody talk, what are they going to learn from you? When they listen to me during the day, when I'm in Amazon, what are they going to learn from me? What applicable business skills do we have to offer and share? And I think that's something that's really important right there because I know in my days, it's important that I make other people feel important because at the end of the day, oh, of as, course. A, as a manager of Amazon, I'm in charge of making sure people meet their productivity goals so that they get their paychecks every single week. And those paychecks pay their rent, their food for their children. Take care of their family. Take care of their families. And you know what, what are some other ways that you yourself make sure that your clients feel important what do you do for them so so i think communication is number one you really got to be able to listen to them what they want so you don't know if you're going to have a client and like i said i work with primary military yeah so you know i might have someone that's only able to buy a hundred thousand dollar house and i also have people that can buy half million dollar houses right so you know you have to make sure both people feel important and you're there to help them get what they want and let them know everything they can get out of a house or a home. Make sure you're getting them in there and doing everything you can. And that communication is super important. That It's that level of interpersonal skills that's super important. I, I usually talk to people that are struggling, other people that ask me for advice or career coaching. One of the things I always notice that's super important is people skills, people management. You know, what's some of the ways during communication, with communication with your clients, how do you really show that high level of people management and people skills? I mean, you really never know who you're going to get. I mean, your customer could be ready to buy right away, ready not to buy. And I think it's really just stepping them through the entire process and really communicating of what's going on, making sure they understand. You know, I do this every day. I, I know what's going on. But, right. you know, for a lot of first-time home buyers, they're like, how does this work? What yeah. do we have to do this? Do we pay this? Do we pay that? It's yeah. my job really to explain and make the process as smooth as possible for them. Right. So they kind of grasp the whole concept. And I like to tell people, after we get done with this, especially for the first-time home buyers, you should have your, at least your minimum, your associate's degree in real estate after we get you in your first home. Right. <laughs> right. Uh-huh. So I try to go through that with them, make sure they're, they're happy. Hey, look, leveraging a sense of humor is super important. I think a lot of times you don't see people smile enough or laugh enough oh, yeah. during the daytime. And if you can bring in a good level of sense of humor to real estate, that probably goes a long way because people are working on oh, yeah. big deals. And, and, I, and I tell people, you know, I'm a lot of fun to work with. I'm straight up and no bullshit. You know, right. you, got, you got to have that good communication where you're talking, you're getting along. You know, I always tell them, don't be shy. Be straight up. If you don't like something, tell me. This isn't my house. This isn't my friend's house or your friend. It's your house. You got to make sure you're comfortable with everything going on and you like where you're going to be. What was your favorite deal so far that you've done? Favorite deal? Yeah. Your favorite real estate deal. Your favorite customer. Favorite customer. Well, that's a t- that's a tough one. Uh, let me let me run through the memories really you quick. You gotta you gotta have some <laughs> deal that stands out. It's either like that was just a funny deal. That was a good time with those people. Or look, I never thought that that was gonna happen. How the uh, hell I, do we I, make that deal? I got work you. Out? Good. It's it's kind of funny, but it's not funny. It's uh-huh. uh, uh, family relocating out from San Diego, getting stationed here, and they're actually stationed over at Mayport Navy Base. Navy Base. Yep. Mm-hmm. So they're up there, and uh, we found, I found, actually found them a new construction. And they actually got a VA $1 move-in special. I was able to oh, negotiate really nice all their closing costs paid for. They got all the appliances, everything paid for. So they literally only paid $1 to move in their house. <laughs> so uh, it was actually the Lavenger family. They're super cool. They right. have uh, two kids, and they have four cats, two dogs, big, big family. Right. And they're driving... And a Prius and a moving truck from San Diego all the way here. Man, they got to work on that car. They got to yeah, get a bigger vehicle there. Yeah. So they're driving all the way. They're about 
14 hours from Jacksonville and all right. of a sudden they get a call from the lender saying, unfortunately, something popped up on your loan approval Jeez. and you're not approved as uh -huh. they're in transit to relocate their whole family here. So obviously the first thing they do is they call me, George, what's going on? Right. What do we do? Are we going to get the place? What's immediately mm -hmm. call the lender, work out a little bit of a solution. What right. happened was the wife had a small business that they were claiming on the taxes as a loss. Right. So I actually had to call their accountant, talk to the accountant, get everything resubmitted so it didn't show a loss on their account. They just broke even. So they're in Jacksonville, still not approved yet, after they've right. already moved and bought the house. And it was a pre-construction, so they've been building this house for three months. <laughs> right. So that was a little bit of a process. So we finally straightened it out about three days um, prior to close, three days after close, we were supposed to close. Got them in the house, and that was just a relief. I mean, it was super <laughs> stressful. I mean, this whole family pretty much being homeless. Yeah. But actually, the reward, I mean, it's, it's a rewarding job. I mean, yeah. once you help someone do that, and, you know, after going through all those stressful things, it's rewarding after, you know, you get them in the house, and it all works out in the end. That is big. That probably sent you right to work right away as soon as you got that phone call from them. Like, what the hell is going on right now? Let me get on the phone and see how I'm going to solve this problem for you guys. Oh, and time is of the essence. So there's no, there's, oh, I'll take care of this tomorrow. Or when Monday, yeah. when Monday gets around for your nine to five, I'll help my customer. It's not like, it's a 24 seven, you know. Right. And like, I just saw you right before this, you know, you walk over here into the condo and the, the first thing you see is boom, a quick text message pops up. One of your customers is asking you for something. You have to jump outside real quickly take a photo of that card that he needed the photo taken from, send it to whoever you sent it to. It's that right. on-demand feeling, which which I think is pretty cool for a lot of people that think about real estate and might want to get in it. Like, it's got to be an exciting career. It, it's definitely exciting. And one of the things that, you know, my wife and just friends and family have always said to me, George, just sit still. Just sit still. Relax for a second. Yeah. I mean, you know, if I'm sitting down, my mind is constantly racing. So I'm always kind of like, it's a good rush because you're always constantly doing something. You're yeah. always constantly helping people. And if you really look at, I just, I get paid to help people find homes. Right. I mean, and that's the, right. large, that's the largest usually financial purchase they're ever going to make in their lifetime. And it's my job to make sure, you know, they're taken care of and everything goes smooth for them. I think another important business skill or just applicable skill to life for people is being able to negotiate, being able to have good, <clears throat> ne good negotiating skills because it's whether you're trying to buy a car, get a house, work on your relationship, push a new um, process through to your boss, you got to be able to negotiate things. You know, how, what have you found some of the best practices in negotiating to be? I feel like for the negotiating tactic, once you establish that relationship, that personal relationship with your customer, which is very important you do, because to do a real estate transaction, especially when I'm working with my buyers, you really have to develop a high sense of trust. You have to trust one another that you're going to make the good decision. And I have to mm -hmm. reinforce to my customer to trust me that I'm going to make the best decision possible and help them the best I can so they can make the best decision for their family. Right. And... You know, it really comes down to psychology as well. When I'm yeah. calling up that client, how long has the house or the property been on the market? You know, are they desperate to sell their property? Mm -hmm. um, is it a military family so I can get all their closing costs covered? A lot of different variables come into play with that. Psychology is very interesting. In psychology, it's really important to understand the, the why that's driving the person that you are working with. What is that why? Every customer's got to have a different why, I'm sure, right? Like, oh, yeah. So for some customers, it's going to be like, I need to be in this area. I need to be in that. Or their main thing is price. They don't care where they live. They just want to, they're just worried about that bottom line number for right. that payment. Right. Right. Now, shifting gears a little bit, somebody like you that's in business doing real estate, uh, you know, what kind of personal development are you into? You read a lot of books, you attend business sell seminars. How do you continue growing yourself into a more effective person? Well, once I order your book on Amazon, I'm sure that'll help a right. lot. <laughs> right. I actually have a free copy over here for you as well. If I, too, could get so. that, if I could get that signed before you know, Bobby T autograph on there, that'd be great. Yep, I'll we'll make sure I get that to you before you leave here today. I actually just started uh, Ryan Searn's book in New York. 
Um, he's a he's on Million Dollar Listing on TV, yeah. and I just started his book a little while ago, and it really starts off, you know, telling about his childhood, how he, you know, couldn't open up, couldn't talk to people, things like that. So, you know, it's kind of like everyone goes through something in their life to develop their career. And before real estate, I actually uh, did custom de- apparel design. So I sold t-shirts. I mean, right. That's what I was uh, on the Jersey Shore hustling t-shirts on the beach and on the boardwalk. I mean, right. so, and you never know who's walking in the stores like that. So right. you're constantly, every five minutes, you're turning over new customers. You got to put on a different face and you really got to wear a lot of different hats. Right. That's what it sounds like. And it sounds like, you know, you, you weren't always just locked in and said it. sounds like you had some personal struggles that were going on. And I think that's something that everybody can relate to at some point in people's lives they're going through some sort of struggle um you know what were some of your big struggles that Uh, you've gone through well i'm originally from west virginia so i grew up there the school systems are not the greatest there Mm -hmm. um i struggled a lot in school i mean i'm talking about their sixth seventh eighth ninth grade was huge struggles for me Um, pretty much failing all of those grades slowly just getting past you know troublemaker kid you know yeah skipping school things like that so Freshman year of high school, um, that was kind of my last, pub- in public school, that was kind of my last, you know, all right, give it one more shot, and the, f- the family's like, we'll see what happens after this. So yeah. pretty much bombed ninth grade, didn't do anything. Uh-huh. So uh, my sister recommended, hey, why don't you look at a few boarding schools? And uh, my aunt suggested that, so we, she was going to take care of the financing on that. So went to the first uh, boarding school, it was a co-ed school in West Virginia, so I'm a country hillbilly kid from West Virginia growing up. So I'm t-shirt, jeans, you know, all the time. Yeah. We go for the interview with uh, the director of admissions here. It's called uh, the Lindsley School in Wheeling, West Virginia. Get in there, and he told me, uh, admissions director says, so give me three reasons why you're going to be a great candidate for our school. Right. I'm 15 years old, never even heard of boarding school. Um and he's asking me that, and I'm just thinking, you know, Sid, my dad made me dress up. I got a button-up <laughs> shirt on, wearing the sports coat. And, and I say, I didn't know what boarding school was till yesterday, Yeah. and I'm not liking it. And I don't think I'm going to do a great at this school. And he said, that's all I needed to hear. Please send your father in. My father goes in. He comes out. I can tell right away from the look on my dad's face, it's, it's not going to be a good ride home. Yeah. So, so I'm thinking all happy going back to public school. That didn't work out. All of a sudden, my sister calls me a day later and says, we found another school outside of Cleveland, Ohio. All, oh, shit. All boys boarding school. So I'm thinking, is this, you know, is this happening? You know, may- maybe I should really think about this. God knows where they're going to send me next. You know, I'm a state away now from West Virginia and Ohio, about a five-hour drive. And who knows? There's boarding schools out west. Who knows what's going on? You know, right. my family said. Yeah. So I go interview with a gentleman named Sam Karabi. He was admissions director there, and I had hair about down to my shoulders at this time. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. My I can't hair. even picture you with that like you, that. you don't want to. Right. <laughs> so, uh, you know, he sits there, has a long time. He's like, I have kids coming in here all the time. And I said, you know what? Let's, 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 let's do this. You know, it's three years out of my life, he's saying. Three years out of my life, and change your world you can you want to go down this path or this path you know which road are you going to take and he kind of just put it there to make that decision yeah so i jumped i jumped on the bandwagon there um did the three years there busted out actually got a sophomore of the year award there because i went through my sophomore sophomore year um junior and senior year and actually graduated with honors there and then i uh, went to college up in new jersey and graduated there so Really changed my life a bit, getting my act together there. Um, after college, had a few bumps in the road, opened up some t-shirt shops around the country, did that for a little while and figured I could get a little bit more serious. Um, was invited down here to Jacksonville from when I was in California doing energy sales for Tesla Motors Oh yeah, out there. And then uh, I think it really hit me with the real estate thing because I have a lot of family in the military and it's really a niche market here. So yeah. kind of finally, I think, found my bearings. Yeah. Um, but it took me a while. I'm 30 years old. It, you know, I really didn't get my act together until I was about 28 years old. It was interesting going from early struggles in school, needing to go to boarding school, hustling t-shirt sales in the lower and the younger 20s to now getting to age 30, being successful in real estate. That's an impressive. That's impressive development right there. That I think a lot of people can always learn something from. And I think like. Everybody's got personal struggles, and then there's there's industry struggles. There's, you know, I'm a 
real estate agent in an industry that's facing problems. You know, in 2007 and 2008, obviously the big struggles were the entire market collapse. Now, in 2019, what what seems to be the real estate struggles that you see in the industry? You know, I think people see a lot, you know, a lot of people right now with the market, the way how hot it is in Jacksonville, people are making money. Right. I mean, and you know, some people are making here a million dollars a year. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not close to that yet, but you know, I plan to get there. And I think a lot of it is, you know, if you want it, you got to go get it. Yeah. You, you got to get out there and you, if you really want something, you got to work for it. There's no one's handing you, you know, something on a silver platter and saying, hey, here you go. Here's a million bucks. Yeah. I mean, you got to get up in the morning. You got to really dedicate yourself and put in that work ethic and take care of it. I mean, I'm with Keller Williams right now in Jack's Beach, um, Keller Williams Atlantic Partners. And their training program over there is just phenomenal. And I see a lot of people, um, young people getting in there. Um, The training is great. And if you go by their training and listen to what these um, senior, tenured uh, real estate agents are telling you to do, I mean, you have all the tools for success there, but you just got to utilize those tools. Mm -hmm. You got to get out there. You got to try. You got to put that effort forward, and whether it's a bad market or a good market, you're gonna find a way to be successful. Oh yes, in that market there. And I think another thing I like to do is to um, think about making recommendations for people. You know, if people want to become, if people want to get into real estate, what would your advice be for them? Uh, definitely find the right company. Mm-hmm. You know, once you get your license and everything, definitely. You know, shop around. You know, you got to look out for yourself. You see what's going to work best for you, and definitely go interview with a few different real estate brokerages and see what's going to work best. Um, I happened to get lucky and just interview with the Keller Williams company with Mr. Mark Zilworth um, first, and I thought it was going to be a great fit. And one of the reasons I chose them is because I had no idea what was going on. I mean, I've never done real estate. I've watched HGTV, and yeah. that, that, that was about my extended knowledge of real estate. I think that's how it is for a lot of people, too. Right. They and see that, and they think that that's, that's what real estate's got to be like. Big homes, nice homes on the beaches. Yeah, you're selling million, You're walking up, selling a million-dollar house. That's it. But, yeah. you know, I feel like finding the person that the house is the easiest part. You got to negotiate. You got to do inspections. You got to write contracts. You got to you know follow timelines. Um, mm-hmm. And there's a lot of money on the line. You don't want to lose people's money. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that's important a little bit. Yeah, jumping back to some recommendations. Definitely find that right brokerage. Find that right company that's going to you know fit to what you're looking for in real estate. Um, and back to what I was saying with the there's so many different aspects of real estate. You can, you know, you can flip houses if you're a constru- if you're a contractor, general contractor. You can do real estate just to get your license, buy houses, or not even have your license. You can still go buy houses, flip houses, things like that. So, yeah. my primary objective is working with buyers. So I'm helping people relocate to Florida or relocate in Florida, or find a different place, and helping them get the best deal for a house that they're looking to buy. And how about people? that they want to get involved in flipping homes. They think, well, hey, look, I I don't have time to go work for a company or to to do all of that right there for whatever reason, but I want to flip homes. I want to get involved in flipping homes. What what does that look like for somebody? So I think the big part of that is knowing connections, knowing people that, you know, do construction, things like that. Having a realtor that you can call to go list your house as soon as it's ready. Um, Right. When is it the best time to list it, you know? How, how hot is the market during these times of the year? Like right now we're in the summer season, you know, people are fin- finishing up school, their kids are graduating or their kids are finishing up wherever they are. So summertime, they have time to go out and look for a few homes with their kids Ooh. next school that they're gonna be in, things like that. So I think timing for, you know, said they're flipping homes, what time frame is gonna work better for them? Timing, connecting with people, understanding a realtor that can help them out, knowing who the contractors, electricians are, et cetera, et cetera, to make sure that they get through that process how they want to. Now for you, George, closing this out, clearing through 25 minutes now in this podcast, I usually try to keep into about 20 or 30 minutes. Um, what's the vision for yourself, man? What do you, when you look one, two, five years down the road right now, what are you seeing for yourself out there? Uh, Two, five years down the road. Right now, um, my real estate business is just uh, my wife and I. Um, She focuses on all the transactions, all the paperwork, all the systems in place. She she works on that. And I'm pretty much out there in the field working with the buyers, um, Mm -hmm. working with the sellers, helping them find homes, sell properties. 
Um, so two to five years, I would definitely like to have a few additions onto the team, probably two or three more people, get another admin, get a marketing person. Mm-hmm. I think marketing is huge in this. So if I could really market myself well and brand myself well, so it's probably get someone in for brand development mm-hmm. um, to really get myself out there. And within five years, I'd really like to have just that well-oiled machine that's just churning and yeah. burning and putting that out there, helping a lot of people. Putting that business on autopilot. Man. Autopilot. That's what I really want to get to. Letting if I can that get to business that level, run itself right there. If and I that, could get a buyer's agent, um, listing agent out there, and then really kind of not so much sit back and just watch it work, but help manage and delegate different things. And, you know, hopefully get those people that start working with me and for me um, to get their own teams going. You know, it's not just about me growing as big as I can personally be, but actually just helping people develop their own and really grow themselves as well. And I think that's super important right there, really in a people helping people business. I know I'm um, talking to some other successful sales people and um, other successful life leaders. That's what they talk a lot about is people helping people. A lot of times when you put that me aspect behind and you, you look at the, the we, how can I help you? That's where you really start to see businesses grow or organizations and teams really grow in that direction there. So, George, big thank you for uh, coming on this podcast. A lot of value put out right there. I'll have your contact information listed at the bottom. So if people want to get in touch with you, they're easily able to get in touch with you right here. And definitely look forward to having you on again sometime soon. I think real estate is one of those areas where people are always very interested in but not enough people know how or where to get started so i think a lot of good value was put out on this right here so thank you yeah thanks again yep um one more thing bobby um i I get a lot of people calling me like especially who are older you know even in their late 30s or 40s and they might already have a little bit of a career they'd love a change um don't ever think it's too late Mm. um i really had a life change from the past three years when i was doing this you know first the first year is always going to be the toughest. You got to work up that pipeline and work it up. Um, but don't ever think it's too late. 40s or 50s, we have people coming in the office starting at real estate at 60 years old. So don't right. think that it's too late to get into the real estate market. And you know, just go interview with a broker and tell them what you might want to do, and they, they're going to be more than happy to help you out. Right there, you so go. It's never too late. So I've had a completely life change in the past three years, um, going from you know making. Twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars a year to really hitting in the six-figure market, which is, you know, it, it's life-changing. Good living, right there. Right. Absolutely. Well, George, thanks again. Much yeah. appreciated. Thanks, Bobby. I appreciate it, man.